Gymnastics is a sport that takes a lot of discipline and focus to master. It takes time to build up your muscles in order to be able to create enough energy to perform tricks. In this video, we will be measuring just how much energy these tricks take. This is the clip that we'll be analyzing. The first part will be the split jump, the second the back handspring, and then the second back handspring for the third part. Firstly, we'll tackle the split jump. Since during this jump, she is suspended in the air with no other forces acting upon her, there is only potential gravitational energy. There is no kinetic energy because, at the maximum height of her jump, she must stop for a while before she can come back down. Therefore, her velocity is 0 meters per second, which in return makes the kinetic energy 0 joules. We can calculate potential gravitational energy by using the equation E equals mgh, where m is mass, g is the force of gravity, and h is height. To find the height, we need a reference point, the center of mass. This is the point where the distribution of the weight of the person is symmetrical. As the person moves, the center of gravity changes, so when she lifts her legs up, the her center of gravity changes. This makes her center of gravity a little higher where her shoulders are instead of under her belly button. This is our height. So now we have all the values to calculate the potential gravitational energy she has in that moment. However, since my tracker is calibrated so that the beam level is 0 meters, we have to add 1.24 meters to the height to take into account the height of the beam. To find the energy she used to perform this jump, we have to subtract the potential gravitational energy she already had because she started off on the beam. So again, we use the height of the beam and the height of her center of mass, which this time is a lot lower because of her weight being distributed a lot lower. We end up with 278 joules. This is the equivalent to lighting up 5 60 watt light bulbs for one second. Next is the first back handspring. Since she isn't jumping, but she's more spinning, she will have kinetic energy. To find kinetic energy, we need the velocity of the movement. This time, I tracked her feet. This way I can track where most of the movement is happening. Using the tracker software, I found the velocity. Since she is suspended in the air, she still has gravitational energy. Then we have to subtract the original energy she had from starting off on the beam. The total energy is equal to lighting 7 100 watt light bulbs for one second. For the last back handspring, we can repeat what we did for the first back handspring. This time, she had a higher velocity resulting in more energy. This is equal to lighting one 100 watt light bulb for 25 seconds. So as you can tell, Sean and many professional gymnasts are quite small, and Sean weighs very little for the amount of muscle she has. These are properties that are very beneficial to gymnasts, which can be explained by looking at the previous data. In both kinetic and gravitational energy, mass is directly proportional to energy. The greater your mass, the more gravity pulls on you. The more weight, the more energy it takes to make you move. This means the less you weigh, the less amount of energy you need to perform tricks. A low weight to high muscle mass would be ideal. Also, for height, the taller you are, the taller your center of mass is. This would make your height greater, and height is also directly proportional to energy in the potential gravitational energy equation. A lower center of mass means more balance and stability. This can be explained from a forces point of view. Watch my next video to learn why.